Welcome to my channel. If you like the content, please subscribe for more. My family warned me I was dating a gold digger and I ignored them. Ten years later, I see they were right. I, now 35 um, met my wife Annabelle, now 34, when we were in college. My family was lower middle class and I was hustling to make sure student loans didn't cake sure student loans didn't case while graduation. At first everything seemed great. She was truly my rock through some really hard times. I struggle with anxiety and depression as well as imposter syndrome. She had her own struggles too. I thought we fit well. My parents and sister always told me that while she seemed nice enough, something was off. This only increased when Annabelle dropped out of college and shared her plans to become a housewife sham one day, so she didn't need a degree. Back then, there was no guarantee that I would have a high-paying job, but I also didn't mind her staying home with our future kids. Then, I got an offer for my dream job. Six figures, company car, travel, the works. They'd also pay for me to obtain my master's, something that seemed out of reach, considering I was drowning in student loan debt. I could finally move out of my parents' house and get one of my own. I used part of my signing bonus to buy an engagement ring for Annabelle. Because I began dating her prior to the money, I never imagined that she was with me for anything else. She loved me when I was a broke college student. We had planned our futures back then. How was it different? My family tried to point out the red flags. Annabelle planned an over-the-top expensive wedding. She wanted the biggest house she could find. My signing bonus was drained rather quickly and I was worried about not saving enough. I constantly told her to slow down. We don't need the best of everything. And she would for a while. Then it'd pick up again. We had two children together, who are now eight and four. The big spending got worse when they came along. But again, I was okay with it. I was making good money. We could afford it. Annabelle grew up in a similar situation as me, so I figured she just wanted to spoil the kids. Then, I got laid off from my job. It wasn't out of nowhere. The field I'm in has slowly begun to dwindle over the years. I stayed on as long as I could, but at this point the company is going under. Annabelle was worried when I relayed the news, but I informed her that we had our savings. We'd be okay until I found work again. I was hired at a new company in a similar but different filed within a month. The catch... I am making significantly less. It's enough to live off of. We can stay in our house, but things need to change. I pointed out our kids can't go to private school anymore. We can't take multiple lavish trips a year. No more frivolous spending. She wasn't happy, but again, I gave her grace. It's a big adjustment, even for me. Just two months after I started at my new job, Annabelle came to me and said, I don't think I can do this anymore. I was taken off guard and we had several discussions that amounted in her taking the kids to be with her mother while we took a break. I already knew our marriage was over. No one can come back from a break unscathed. Sure enough, a few weeks after she moved out, she told me she wanted a divorce. She claimed we had grown apart, said I worked too many hours at my last job and I was never around. While it's true, I did work a lot. I was home every night for dinner. We had all of the weekend together. I traveled often, but she always came with me up until our oldest started elementary school. She never complained about a damn thing. In fact, I once said I was tired from working a long week and I felt guilty that she was home alone with two kids. But she assured me she was happy. I asked her several times if it was about me losing money. She dunnied it up and down. She married me so young and needed to see what was out there. She put it all on me. Naively. I told myself that this was what happened when you marry your college sweetheart. You grow apart. I didn't want to believe that my entire marriage had been a lie. Within two weeks of filing for divorce, she was with someone new. The reality came crashing down. She tried to play it off as they just so happened to meet, but they moved fast. She was moving in with him within three months. They were engaged before our divorce was even final. This guy is a surgeon. He makes six figures a year. I don't know if the cheating began when I got laid off or before. I suppose it doesn't matter. We're divorced now. Due to my schedule, I only see my kids every weekend and I hate it. 
I regret not making Annabelle sign a prenup as she got half of everything. My family is aware that she's moved on and I know they have their suspicions, but we've never spoken about it. In the three years since the divorce, they have never uttered I told you so, even though I deserve it. I went from loving Annabelle to despising her. I love my children very much, but I hate that I wasted ten years on a woman who only wanted me for my money. I should have so much more saved, but she either squandered it on useless junk when we were married or took half in the divorce. God, I hate her. Redditor's reactions. Update after. Redditor 1. Sorry to hear this man, you really got screwed. I never believed in looking at tiny signs or red flags when looking at a long-term partner. But after having a similar situation myself, there's actually a lot of things you can do with dating to see how somebody really feels on the inside. Redditor follow-up. Bojack Horseman had the perfect quote for this. When you're wearing rose-tinted glasses, the red flags just look like flag. Redditor 2. It honestly feels like your family brainwashed you. Why would a gold digger date someone who's broke and then stay together for 10 years and have two kids? Sounds like you had other issues and grew apart, which is completely valid, even though it's painful. I feel like a lot of parts are missing and you don't really talk about how your relationship was because it's much easier saying, oh, well, I guess she just wanted my money. Redditor follow up. Why would a gold digger date someone who's broke and then stay together for 10 years and have two kids? Scrolled too far to find this. Perhaps later in life, she became accustomed to the new lifestyle op provided and found it difficult to adjust, but that doesn't make that the only reason she left. Sounds like you had other issues and grew apart, which is completely valid, even though it's painful. Opie essentially invalidated every other reason she gave and chalked it up to gold digging. She must have been a patient miner then, because how is she a gold digger when you had no gold in the first place? Yet, she stayed. Redditor 3. I suspect your ex has a very different story. As someone said, there are three sides of the story. Your side, her side, and the truth. It's important to acknowledge that your ex-wife was supportive of you during tough times and made it clear from the beginning that she wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. Despite this, your family spoke poorly of her and accused her of being a gold digger, but you don't see it that way. Divorce is never easy, and it's difficult to come to terms with the fact that the future you envisioned with your spouse has changed. While it's understandable to feel hurt by your ex-wife moving on so quickly, it's a sign that she was unhappy in the relationship for a while. Whether or not she cheated is no longer relevant, as the focus should be on co-parenting your children in a positive way. Instead of harboring feelings of despise towards your ex-wife, it's important to accept that the relationship is over and to appreciate the good times you had together. Although it didn't work out as planned, you have two beautiful children from the marriage, and that is something to cherish. It's time to move forward and start a new chapter in your life. Redditor follow-up. I agree with you mostly, though as someone else mentioned, it is strange she dropped out of university to be a Sam before they even had kids, unless Op neglected to mention they were already pregnant. Either way, I think that the ex did have valid reasons to leave. They probably became accustomed to the money, so it would have been hard, but I'm sure there were other things there. Something attracted her to Op in the first place, back before he made a lot of money. Money also does change people. It's been literally 10 years. People change a lot in those years. So for Op to boil it down to, oh, she must have always been into my money doesn't make sense to me. It's entirely possible she went into the relationship a different person. And then money came along and it can and does change people. Also, 10 years is a long time. People tend to change over that kind of time. Who knows what else happened in that time, too, between Op and his ex. He doesn't explain much about their actual relationship, so it's hard to say how it actually was. Updated. It has been a while since I last shared an update about my life. Sadly, the past two years have been quite tumultuous for me and my family. As you might recall, my ex-wife Annabelle had moved on to a new partner who was a successful surgeon. However, fate had other plans for them and he suffered a devastating injury while skiing, which ended his career. After that, he became abusive towards our children, 
which was unacceptable to me. Despite my attempts to resolve the situation, Annabelle did nothing about it. I had no choice but to take legal action and fight for primary custody of our children. It has been a long and grueling process, but I am happy to say that I have won. I now have full custody of our children, and they are safe and sound with me. It has been a challenging journey, but I wouldn't have been able to do it without the support of my family and friends. I have learned a lot about myself and the importance of standing up for what is right. I am relieved that my children are no longer in harm's way, and I am looking forward to building a better life for them. Despite everything that has happened, I still wish Annabelle all the best. I hope that she can find happiness and peace in her life and that she will always be a part of our children's lives.